and I haven't received one dime. New at six, another barrier to benefits. The state is using facial recognition technology to combat unemployment fraud. But tonight, the I-team is digging into how it could be making the process harder for some Floridians. Do I think that the people that had to wait longer because the ID.me process didn't work disproportionately affected people who are black or people who are female? Absolutely. In tonight's special full circle report, we're looking at the issue from all sides. And what our data shows is that um, it is enormously effective at preventing identity theft. That's too much of a high stakes decision. And giving you an exclusive look at the research being done to address bias. Yeah, let's see if it recognizes you. I just want to talk to a person and you can never talk to anybody. So that's how I came to call in the news station. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Wendy Ryan. I'm Paul Legrone. Jameson is on assignment tonight, and we do begin here with that special report tonight on the claims of bias within facial recognition technology now being used to access unemployment benefits here in Florida. I-team investigator Kylie McGivern takes us inside a local lab for a first-hand look at the equipment, and she asked the company behind this new technology whether its system puts some out-of-work Floridians at a disadvantage. It's not in the best order. These papers proving, Janae Armstrong says. This is what I wanted to show you. That she is eligible for unemployment benefits. This is the important thing right here, that it was reversed. Armstrong won her appeal, but is still battling for benefits. And I haven't received one dime. This time to prove her identity through ID.me. What are they making you send in? My license my social security number, and I did it over and over and over. The next step, taking a selfie to see if it matches your ID. That's a, a thing that comes over, over and over like five times and it changes colors. Like a scanner. A scan, exactly, it's a scanner. And I'm worried, I'm like, what's the, what, now what is this? And that didn't work. After three failed attempts, the final option is a video call with someone from ID.me. And I never get there. The wait, we're told, can be anywhere from about two to six hours. I just want to talk to a person, and you can never talk to anybody. So that's how I came to call in the news station. Armstrong isn't alone. I can't get through that. My account just keeps getting locked. Some stuck, others verified, but their account still locked by DEO made to wait weeks, even months, for the state to release unemployment checks. DEO tells the I-team they're still working to resolve the issue and unlock claims that have been relocked and that people should allow at least 24 to 48 hours for this process. There are many, many flaws, and this is, a, you know, one of the many. Vanessa Brito, an advocate who's helped thousands of Floridians navigate the state's unemployment system, says she's heard from more black individuals and older women when it comes to those unable to match their face to their ID. Do I think that people that were locked out were disproportionately one race or one ethnicity? No. Do I think that the people that had to wait longer because the ID.me process didn't work disproportionately affected people who were black or people who were female? Absolutely. We brought the concerns to ID.me CEO Blake Hall. And what our data shows is that um, it is enormously effective at preventing identity theft and at preventing criminals uh, from attacking the state because criminals do not want to put their face in front of a camera um, when they are committing a felony. Florida is one of 26 states that have hired ID.me in a matter of months to fight unemployment fraud. The company says 10% of applicants have to wait for video chat verification after failing the facial recognition. Are you tracking the demographics of those people that are not able to just quickly make it through, that get held up? So what we do is we don't track like uh, demographics of folks going through, but we, what we do want to make sure is that the technology isn't discriminating against anyone. Hall says they randomly selected a thousand failed matches to review. And what the data shows uh, is that there actually is no correlation between the color of your skin and your propensity to pass or fail um, that photo match step. It has much more to do with like the lighting of the environment and whether you took like a blurry photo or like a picture of only half your face, like those are the types of things. We asked DEO multiple times how it vetted the ID.me facial recognition program. DEO did not answer, only stating that it does not have data related to issues with ID.me. The state would not agree to an interview, 
Instead, it sent a statement from Secretary Dane Eagle calling IDME a trusted partner whose services have been crucial in protecting the identities of Floridians. The data on face match shows at 95% plus pass it. The algorithm IDME uses to compare a person's face to their government ID is one of the top among hundreds a federal lab has tested for accuracy. We run it on large databases, large uh, databases of images. Some uh, systems are better than others. Patrick Rother, a computer scientist at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, published a study in December 2019, finding that many facial recognition algorithms did not perform as well when identifying differences between pairs of black, Asian, or female faces. The error rate was better for programs that just compare a person's face to their own government ID, like IDME. Still, when we brought up the 95% success rate the company touted... 95% is, is not actually a good number, right? That would mean that 5% uh, would be failing. Okay, so one question would be why? And then asking uh, which uh, demographics are in that, uh, that community, it would be beneficial to everyone, I think, to try and improve that number. These are muscles in the face. It's problems like this scientists like Sean Canavan at the University of South Florida are working to solve. It is arguably the number one problem in face recognition right now, is how to combat bias. Canavan says a lot of the systems are trained predominantly on white people. This person being a different ethnicity, it is failing. We tested it, giving Canavan permission to use pictures and videos of me online to train the system. Let's see if it recognizes you. Yeah. Kylie. Yeah, so it recognizes you. Uh, there are many cases where it doesn't, though. The computers are developed by humans who have their own biases. Mutali and Kande is the founder of AI for the People, a nonprofit working to advance racial justice and artificial intelligence. Is the goal of weeding out any unemployment fraud worth using facial recognition technology? So I would argue actually it's not, uh, principally because facial recognition technology does not work in the way that it's intended right now. I think that's too much of a high stakes decision. The implications of somebody not getting their unemployment benefits that could lead to inability to buy food, it could lead to loss of housing, it could lead to inability to access transportation. A reality Armstrong knows firsthand. I just want what's owed to me. Armstrong has since been able to verify her identity through IDME, but weeks later is among those still waiting on DEO to unlock their accounts. The state says it's looking into her case. Meanwhile, IDME says it is opening locations for in-person verifications. If you're still struggling to collect unemployment, we have a form online at abcactionnews.com. I'm I-Team investigator Kylie McGivern, taking action for you.